10 sketchbook prompt ideas. One, your favorite person. For me, that's you. What's up guys? On my last TikTok on art tips, art, <laughs> on my last art tips on TikTok video, I saw a comment where someone was like, have you seen the art tips on Pinterest? And I was like, wait a minute. There's art tips on Pinterest. So guess what we're gonna do today? We're gonna look at art tips on Pinterest and see how trustworthy they actually are. My prediction is that Pinterest is gonna have much better art tips than TikTok. And this video is brought to you by Squarespace. So apparently there's a lot of these short videos on Pinterest now too. The first one is how to become an artist. I would love to know how to become an artist. Number one, get a sketchbook. Sketchbooks are great. Great for practice uh, to find and study a subject. Find something that you're genuinely interested in and you wanna study that. Save inspo on Pinterest. Of course, Pinterest is a must for artists. Three, actually draw. Yep, never stop drawing. This is the hardest part. So this tip right here, I think is probably the most important to know and you've worded it beautifully. Give yourself permission to draw terrible looking art. We're always trying to get better and all the great artists that you see that post their amazing work online, they're only posting their good ones. Remember that they have tons and tons of drawings that they're just not happy with, but they're not sharing that with you. I don't share that with you. Learn from other artists, but only compare yourself to yourself. We're off to a good start here, Pinterest. Good job. How to draw clothing folds by Majestic Sock. I think this person was actually part of my Patreon Discord server for a while. So good to see you doing well. 21K likes on your video. See you guys, join my Patreon and you too can be like Majestic Sock. I take full credit for all of your success. Folds are the most simple. They happen when a fabric falls straight down, fabric falling in a series of S curves. Zigzags are like pipe folds, except it's when it bends. Diaper folds happen between two tension points. Half block folds are like U shapes. Spiral folds are when stuff twists, basically. This is what it looks like when force acts on a clock. These are my extra notes. This was a clothing study I did. All of my notes and resources are on a Notion Art Study Guide. Mana Day James is our Ow. instructor for clothes. These are all of my notes. So I think this video is a great example of someone who's very organized, who's studying all these different types of fabric folds. So I respect your grind, good job. And I'm sure it's very inspiring for you guys to see just how much work can go into something as simple as clothing folds, which I guess it's not that simple. It's kind of hard actually. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty difficult. Oh, I paint faces with watercolor. Watercolor, heavy paper strip, but these go by too fast. Shadow ref, I can't read. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's no sketch. There's no sketch. Wow. So this is all shapes, this entire process. Wow. I love that. Medium shadows. Wow. Contouring now and a few wispy details and you're done. Wow, that is amazing. That's insane. I think I can speak for most people when I say that I would not be comfortable uh, dropping watercolor onto a sheet like that without any kind of sketching. So really good job to you. And the thing we can learn from this video is that shapes are important, okay? Don't do too much. Start off with big shapes, break it down, okay? Simplify your reference as much as possible for your simple brain. Oh, it's me. I can't, it's amazing. Good job, Sam. Here's another easy idea to paint out and there's no audio. Oh, interesting. Add some books and duplicate them. And again, whoa, <laughs> my goodness. Okay, I guess I'll talk over this video since there's no audio. Sketching your character. Wow, I love the perspective you put on the shelf there. Add some light. What? What? <laughs> Bro. Made it look so easy. Look at that subtle rim lighting on the character. That bounce light coming from the back and hitting the character from behind. Pause. Drawing some side profiles. Let's go. So we start off with the cranium, which is beautiful. Nice round shape for the top of the skull. Great. And a wedge shape for the front of the face. Okay, and you've got this nice curve for the uh, front side of the muzzle. And then that nice round shape for the back of the head. That looks fantastic. That is. I've been struggling a lot with treating my sketchbook like a sacred rather than something I'm supposed to enjoy. You got to always keep in mind, remind yourself that, hey, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to make bad drawings. This is a learning experience for you and we're gonna stumble, we're gonna fall along the way. This is great stuff. These look really, really nice. Love your stylization. You keep this up. Shat, ooh, 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 whoa. Wait, hold on, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Okay, that highlight is on the wrong side, but wow. 
Hold on, you, what? What happened just now? What, hey, hold on. I think I know what's happening here, but I'll walk you guys through this step by step so you can do the same thing for your characters. See that right there? So this person made a new layer on top of that original drawing, made it a clipping mask, and then you set that layer to multiply and you select a medium grayish kind of color and you paste it on there with a paint bucket. Now what that does is that makes all of your colors look darker. So it looks like your entire drawing is in shadow. Huge brain. And here, see that? The artist here is just going in with an eraser and taking out some parts of that multiply layer. So after you take it out, it looks like the shadow is not there anymore. And when shadow's not there, what do we have? light very very smart process and this so this kind of saturation on the edges this subsurface scattering looking thing is mostly done with i want to say either hard light or overlay this one looks like it's been done on an overlay layer and overlay basically just makes your light colors even lighter and makes your medium colors even more vibrant and then highlights and details and you have a very nicely finished piece. There you go, guys. Those are all the secrets that this person decided not to share with you guys in this video, but I just exposed you. Next up, we got drawing a face from imagination. Let's see how this turns out. Circle, good, for the cranium. Center line. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, ooh. yeah, that's, oh. Why oh, you gotta do that? Good. Guys, repeat after me. No smoke, smoke bed. That's looking very good so far. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. Okay, very simple shading. I like that. I like that. Oh, the highlight. Ooh. Ooh. Jesus. So even though there were no explicit instructions, you guys can kind of see the process, right? It's like you're you're constructing the structure of the head. You're building off the structure. You're refining throughout the entire process. All right, here we go. Dramatic lighting tips, a tip I should have known before going pro. I make concept art for Epic, and I'm gonna show you how to make dramatic lighting. Oh, that's sick. Tips. Start off by using the selection tool to mask off areas where the light will hit. Once you've selected these areas, go and add a layer, set it as clipping mask, and paint in a solid white in the selected areas. Using the smudge tool, go through and soften some of the edges on the inside. Ooh. Finally, select a soft airbrush. Choose your light color and set the mode to screen. And I'll just paint in a glow around the outside. This helps screen. follow what you want next. Very interesting. That looks pretty good. I don't think I ever use the uh, blend mode screen. I think for the most part, I use like overlay or hard light. I might try that out. Types of shading. Types of shading. Hatch, cross hatch, tonal, stipple. Let's do just a beautiful little colorful. Okay. I don't know. I think the resolution of this video is just not doing your examples justice. I can't tell the difference between each and every one of them. And you definitely should not have gone through stipple that fast. For those of you who don't know, stippling is basically you take the point of your pencil and you just put down tiny dots, more dots in the areas that are darker and less dots in the areas that are lighter. And it takes forever. You went through this in like 10 seconds. There is no way no way you stippled that fast. 10 sketchbook prompt ideas. One, your favorite person. For me, that's you. Two, life drawing objects in your room. Absolutely fantastic. Drawing objects around you is a great way to practice your observational skills. Three, color theory practice. Four, illustrate your favorite song. That's good for you if you want something a little bit more feeling. Five, mirror reflection. Good, self portraits are always great, but remember guys, uh, we're not supposed to draw ugly people. <laughs> Six, recreate a scene from your dreams. Awesome. Seven, plants. And eight, last photo on your phone. That's a good one, but it might get a little bit sus. Nine, a skull sus. Perfect. You had me at skull. Ten, illustrate a word that inspired you. Try grass. Here's another fun idea to try out. All right. Woo. Cloud. Oh, I love the colors there. That looks great. Okay, lighting. Sometimes I do this. <laughs> Trees. Oh. Ye oh. What, what, what? That is such a great way to break down something that seems very complex. You know, like you just paint the sky, flip it, and put some brush strokes on it, and it's water. <laughs> That's amazing. Never be scared of drawing hands again. Okay. You can simplify the palm with a box shape like this, but this isn't telling the whole story. A box? Inside our palms are four bones, which means this box shape actually can distort quite a bit. Yes. The three most important muscles to draw hands make a shape on the box, kind of like this. Part two, 
Knuckles. Knuckles. We practiced representing the palm as this sort of box shape. Yes. Now we're going to be representing the knuckles as four circles. Oh boy. Oh boy. Notice how these circles move positions when the box becomes deformed and poses like this. And the hand is fully clenched up. The knuckle of the middle finger is at the peak. Okay, so this one I think is still quite good. You're adding in the joints for your knuckles, but um, there's one thing that you want to be mindful of. There's the one, two, three, four circles, and they're not perfectly aligned. The middle finger is usually, for most people, at the peak. So this palm is not a perfect box, and these circles kind of go in a little mountain peak. Part three, the fingers. From this angle, the bottom section of the finger is only slightly longer than the middle section, which is only slightly longer than the tip. We'll realize that this bone is actually about as long as these two combined. Although we know fingers have three joints in real life, yes. it's common for cartoonists to only draw two. Yes. Yes. This will make hands a lot easier to draw, and will even make your hand poses feel yes. stronger because of the sharp angles. There are even some video games that rig their characters this way. That's really good. I, I'm pretty sure I saw a video where Ethan Becker talked about this too, where the uh, fingers have one, two, three joints, but a lot of times when you're simplifying, you basically remove this tiny joint right here. Never be scared to throw hands again. Part four, the thumb. It's an easy mistake to think of the thumb as just a smaller and shorter finger slapped onto the side of the hand. That's why I really hate these things. Oh God. This bone mm. inside the hand has a ton of mobility. Ah. This big blob on our hands makes a lot of different shapes as our thumb moves around. Depending on the person, the tip of the thumb can angle back quite a bit. Yep. giving it this sort Look of mean shape. Exaggerating this curve in the thumb will make your hand poses easier That's to good. In fact, treating all the fingers like beans at the end of sticks will help you draw hands in weird perspectives. That's good. That's, That's really good. Here's a few tips to help with your gesture drawing. Try drawing each finger as just one line, then fill in the details. Some poses will just start out as big shapes. Simplify. Wow. You can block out a pose by just drawing three fingers as one shape. When the fingers are really spread out, an extra line will help you keep the proportions correct. And that's the end of the series. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I know people out here talking about feet for free, but this for free? Man, that is amazing. TikTok could never. Four fun drawing exercise ideas. One, paint blobs and then turn them into weird characters. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Two, nice. Draw something as quickly as you can. This one's fun. This Three. one's very fun. Pick an object and draw it without lifting your cap. That's that's a good one too. Yeah. Use a word generator to give you a random prompt. Wow. I should try that. Random prompt from word generators. Maybe we could do like a little art challenge video from that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Oh man, are those boxes? Mmm. Ooh. Oh, more boxes. Ooh. This is like the, okay, at this point, let me just pause it here. At this point, I don't think the boxes are actually helping you. You know how to draw a torso. You know your anatomy. Boxes in the torso, unless you're drawing something that requires a lot of very strict perspective work, then I can see why a box might be helpful. But for this, <laughs> yeah, so look at this comment right here by Not Club Penguin, which is great. When drawing the torso, it's better not to use boxes. I agree. Try using a shape closer to the human rib cage. I agree. It's better to get references for those, study that, and then put that into your torsos so that your drawings can have a more organic start, which then is going to lead into more organic flowing shapes later on. Look at the second comment. Where are our big girls? Where's the realism? People come in all different shapes and sizes. People are born different. And just like how everyone is built different, every artist has their own personal preferences. Please let individual artists draw what they want to draw. What the f What? What is this? What? Oh my. I wish I could understand what you're saying right now, but. What? What? Oh my god. <laughs> Clothing folds, okay. Will be drawn and shaded differently depending on whether it's thin or thick, soft thin, and thin. stiff, or loose and tight on a body. Folds form when something causes the fabric to bunch up. Yep. 
like if I tie That's a string right. around this cloth. I'm wearing this sweater right now, but watch what happens when yep. I bend my elbow, it bunches up. Very good Think example. about where your fabric is bunching up, like when a character bends their elbow or their knee. There's a lot to talk about with clothing folds, so look up these types of folds. And remember that wrinkles aren't flat lines like they are shown here. They're shapes with form, usually a triangle shape. Yep. If I lay a blanket flat on the ground, there's going to be hills and valleys. Practice drawing what you see in life and how other artists treat folds. Yep, I love the example that you give. Like, you can look at me right now, okay? Look at my shirt. Look, when I bring my arm down, look what happens. Look at these wrinkles radiating out from my armpit. Just like that scent that's also radiating out from my armpit. Well explained. Fantastic. Can you do a female side head tutorial? Okay. Square? Okay. Oh, no, not square. Uh, circle. Sorry. <laughs> getting my geometry mixed up. Fantastic, look at that little pizza shape for the side view of the eye. That's what I'm talking about. You gotta put all of your facial features in the right perspective. The chin, the jaw, okay, the jaw might be a bit long, but everyone's built different, you never know. Hey, that doesn't look half bad, that's pretty good. And out of curiosity, I went into the comments of this video and people were like, can y'all stop attacking this art? She's probably better than half the people who are like messing with her. Oh my goodness. What's going on here? Yes, they asked for a head side sketch. Just look at the head side if you don't like the lower part. Oh, are people mad about the boobies? Or half of y'all can't even draw a side profile. Why are you dissing it? Who's dissing? Where are the dissing comments? I can't find it. She looks like a webtoon. She looks like where, where are the dissing comments? I What? <laughs> Did I miss the drama? All right, guys, there we go. There is our first look at some art tips on Pinterest. I will have to say the overall quality of these videos are so much higher than what I've been able to find on TikTok. So if you guys are out here and you're searching for some short form art advice, Pinterest, I can recommend it. And this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. Squarespace allows you to connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights. You can create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system. There are powerful blogging tools to categorize, share and schedule your posts. And you can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third party tools help you manage inventory, promote products, and streamline bookkeeping. You're also able to reconcile and file sales tax and ship items across the globe. Squarespace also allows you to display posts from your social profiles on your website. Automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share too. So if you guys need a website, go to squarespace.com right now for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash samdesarts. That'll save you 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you were entertained. Be sure to check out my Patreon for monthly process videos and tutorials. And with that being said, I will see you guys on the next video.